June 6, 1944. D-Day. You are there. Order Crown Guard reporting June 6, 1944. The BBC shortwave has just transmitted this message to France. All Frenchmen who live anywhere within 18 miles of the Channel Coast are being warned to get out of their homes at once and stay off roads, railways, and bridges. The London office of the Associated Press quotes the German Transocean News Agency as asserting that the invasion of Western Europe has begun. These bulletins explain the stepped-up Allied air offensive in the last four days, which has been hitting rail and bridge targets near the Channel Coast in thousand plane attacks. It's no secret that a second front for this year was discussed by Allied leaders, and now the news has just been made official by this announcement from Supreme Allied Headquarters in London. Under the command of General Eisenhower, Allied naval forces supported by strong air forces began landing Allied armies this morning on the northeastern coast of France. This is D-Day. American and British troops have begun a frontal attack on Hitler's Atlantic Wall. We take you now to correspondents who have been standing by with the assault forces. All things are as they were then, except... You are there. The Armada. 4,000 ships carrying invasion troops. Ned Calmer reporting aboard the cruiser Ancon crossing the channel. There's been no successful military expedition across this channel since William the Conqueror and his army crossed from France to England nearly a thousand years ago. Today, we're moving ahead together. British, American, Canadian forces, men and ships, moving toward the continent of Europe, toward the beaches of France. Overhead are squadrons of the 8th and 9th Air Forces, charged with knocking out German targets and pinning the enemy down. targets, and the small boats carrying the first assault troops are moving through choppy seas that may capsize them. Harry Marble is on an LST. Come in, Harry Marble. This is Harry Marble, reporting from one of the craft in the channel moving toward France. The action has begun. units of the 1st, 2nd, 4th, and 29th Divisions, the 2nd and 5th Ranger Battalions, and the Special Engineer Task Force. Combat teams of the 82nd and 101st Airborne Divisions parachuted into France behind the beaches several hours ago. These men are from Company C of the 116th Infantry Regiment, slated to land on Omaha Beach. They have never seen action. You are about to embark on a great crusade toward which we have striven these many months. The hopes and prayers... Captain of Hawks, a Virginian, is reading General Eisenhower's order of the day. The allies and brothers in arms on other fronts will bring about the destruction of Nazi tyranny over the oppressed peoples of Europe and security for ourselves in a free world. Your task will not be an easy one. Your enemy is well trained, well equipped, and battle hardened. He will fight, fight savage. The tide has turned. The free men of the world are marching together to victory. I have full confidence in your courage, devotion to duty, and skill in battle. We will accept nothing less than full victory. Good luck, and let us all beseech the blessings of Almighty God upon this great and noble undertaking. Section leaders, check men, check equipment. Stand by for beaching. The job of these men is to break through the German beach guns, to clear the way. The officer checking the men of his platoon is Lieutenant Stanley Schwartz of New York City. Rifleman carrying M1. B.A.R. men. Bazooka teams. 
We are coming in on a rising tide and time to give the engineers an hour before high water so they can dynamite the underwater obstacles before the high tide covers them. Hey, Powell, let me yeah. uh, Captain, could you say a word or two about your particular mission? Clear an exit from the beach. We're working together with companies A and B. There's two exits off Dog Green Beach, D1 and D3. We're opening up D1. Have you a clear idea of your part of the beach? A tidal flat, a field, a bluff, an emplaced gun. We've had it as a problem on maneuvers. Yeah, now. Oh, it's a lateral road. Yeah. Barbed wire, cut it or blow it. Depends. Cut it or blow it, depends. 150 yards to the bluff, men carrying a heavy load. Drag it if they got to. Okay, drag it. That big gun, I place it there. Now, uh, little over to the left. Now, west of the draw. On the ridge. West of the draw. West of the draw. Now, Colonel Figgis' pillbox is below the ridge, right? Right. Maybe we ought to work a little over to the east. We got to work west of the draw. The way through is west of the draw. All set? Yeah, all set. All set, then. Maybe, uh, maybe you should have stayed in the air course, Schwartz. Maybe. All right, this is it. How do you men feel about this thing you're on? What do you say, fellas? How do you feel? I don't know. How far did they say to them plus? About 150 yards. Martian beach grass. No cover. They say you hit the bluff, you got cover. That's if they got the terrain figured right. We'll find out. Forget it for now, will you? Look at that poor old son trying to bust through them clouds. I feel sorry for it. Company C will be beaching on Omaha Beach in a few minutes. Come in, Ned Calmer. Ned Calmer reporting. Our cruiser is within sight of the coast now. Our naval guns are still firing over our troops to break up Nazi troop concentrations. There are at least 16 big Nazi guns facing down on the invasion beaches. Some of them have been silenced by naval fire. Most of them will have to be knocked out by the infantry if we're to establish a beachhead. Come in, Harry Marble. Marble coming in to Omaha Beach. We're pretty close now. After being penned up in the holds of the ships, men are going into the assault boats for the final run to shore. we've been preparing for. We will cover Company C on Omaha when we can. In the meanwhile, let's see if we can contact Luciopi on Utah Beach. Giaffi went in with another company at each hour. This is Lou Giaffi. Hard to describe what's been happening here. Men landing in scattered groups at wrong points, moving up but without knowing just where they're going. I've seen assault boats blow up before my eyes. Nobody seems to know what's happening or what they'll run into. No communication. I can't say what's going to happen here. Come in, Bill Leonard, with the British. This is Bill Leonard with British and Canadian troops at the easternmost end of the invasion line. They must move forward if the Nazis aren't to mow them down. Every sector of this invasion force must move forward if we're not to be isolated into separate pockets, which the Nazis can then destroy one at a time.
Has Company C landed on Omaha Beach yet? Come in, Harry Marble, on Omaha. Company C has taken it head on. Some men have drowned under weight of equipment and the tide is rising rapidly. Enemy fire coming down. Men can't seem to move up. Most of radio equipment smashed, so no one knows what's doing to the right or left. Some men have been huddled under the seawall since the landing. For minutes, the men haven't moved. Too much happened at once on the landing. Boats capsizing, shells coming in, and the boats landing at an unfamiliar section of the beach. Captain Hawk's leg was crushed. There is the seawall which runs along Omaha. At this point, coils of barbed wire up there extending inland. And beyond that, the marshes that run to the bluffs. Can you move it? Not very good. What about those weapons? Stuff's all lost in the water. Bangalore's rifles, ammo, mortars. Most of the rifles got sand in them. Yeah, well, we gotta strip them down. Yeah. Figure out where we are. And there's the point over there. We're way east of it. Yeah, maybe a half mile. Yeah, well, that puts us on dog white. I've got to find company A. I've got to find company A, uh, Dog Green Beach. There's company A, Dog Green Beach. Got it's his find... company C! Got to find company A! Company C! Crawling around, hunting, looking for us. We gotta work up through there. And over west to Beerville. Gotta hit that assembly point in Beerville. That's where we're supposed to get. Straight up and across, and up the bluff then west of Beerville. Yeah, that's where we're supposed to get. We gotta get off this beach. Who's moving up? Who's moving up? We take you to 5th Corps headquarters. Come in, Ned Calvert. This is Ned Calmer aboard the Ancon. It's now nearly 8 a.m., an hour and a half since the first landing. The Ancon is serving as headquarters for the 5th Corps, which is in charge of the operation on Omaha under the commander of General Jerome. We're in mid-channel now, about 14 miles from the beachhead. There's no direct communication from the beach, but Colonel Benjamin Telly, in a small boat moving back and forth along the beach, is relaying reports of the action to us via radio. General Jerome, sir, what's your estimate of the situation on the beaches? We're moving up on Utah, but we seem to have run into heavier opposition on Omaha than we'd expected. Colonel Talley, sir. Go ahead, Talley. Situation unchanged. I can see wounded men trying to crawl forward as the tide comes in. Lots of obstacles still in the water. Beaches jammed up with men and enemy fire pouring in. Aren't we moving in at all? Don't seem to be. I can see some LCT standing offshore, milling around. Can't come in because of the jam on the beaches. Over. Keep me informed. Over. General, exactly how critical is the time factor in the beach situation? We're supposed to move in at a prescribed rate of buildup of men and equipment, as against a calculation of the enemy buildup. But if the first wave doesn't push through on schedule, then the reinforcements standing offshore can't come in. We've got to get a foot in the door at it. Colonel Talley. Jerome, any change? Not any worse, sir. Aren't we moving up to the high ground? 
Not yet. Keep me informed, Tally. Over. For the time being, this headquarters can only stand by. The operation is in the hands of small groups of men scattered over the beaches. We're relying on their capacity to break up that log jam on the beaches, wherever it may be and whoever they are. Victory on Omaha Beach hangs on them now. A small handful of men. That's asking a great deal of them, isn't it, sir? Great deal. Come in, Harry Marble. There is still no movement off this sector of the beach since Company C landed. Maybe a chance to move to the bluff on the cover of that smoke. Where's the bang of that? Down near the water. Get it. Huh? Get it. A bangalore, a pipe filled with dynamite to blow gaps in obstacles like coils of right. barbed wire. Let's get going. Get him. All right. Get him. All right, Tom. Get your men moving. Come on, son. Let's get going. All right, let's get going. Come on, let's get going. I'm in trouble. Come on, let's keep going. Rifles reassembled? Yeah. What do you think of the Navy landing us in the wrong place? I bet it ain't as bad where we were supposed to land. Probably the same. Yeah. It's prowling around looking for us. What happened to the tanks that were supposed to land in front of us and help knock out them big guns? What's the good of talking about that now? Won't take the cross long now to find out we're not moving. We want to be up at the wall soon. Now look, Lieutenant. You want to move, we want to move. But even if they blow that way or getting us standing here or pushing us into the wall. Or standing or moving, it's just the same. There's more chance moving. It's just like General Porter said. There's gonna be two clear kind of people that's gonna be on this beach. Those who are dead and those who are gonna die, so let's get the hell out of here. There's that 88 again. And you'll get that birth gun. what I tell you, huh? The Army's smart and I tell you what it's gonna be like. Or that 88 prowling around looking until it finds you. They don't dare tell you what it's gonna be like. Otherwise, who'd be here? Guys would be blowing their brains out first. I had me a big shovel. I'd dig me a big hole. I'd go way down deep. Way down where that 088 can't find me. It'd be like laying in an open grave. Let's get out of here before we all go nuts. Where's that thing? Lambert!
Company C of the 116th Regiment moved off the sector of Omaha Beach called Dog White. Moved off, except for these. To gain a foothold in France, the men must dig in before the Nazis recover from the surprise and impact of the initial assault and launch a fierce counterattack. Lucioffi, are you still on Utah? We are. These are the assault troops, the anonymous scattered groups of men who opened up the way. We're moving up, moving up higher above Utah Beach. We seem to be in better shape now. What's it like where you are, Harry? Harry Marble with the forces from Omaha. We are now well past the seawall and farther inland. The scattered groups of men are becoming an army again, and it's beginning to look like it can become a victorious army. Come in, Bill Leonard with the British unit. This is Bill Leonard again. We are now in the fields of Normandy. It's been one struggle after another, from the beaches to the hedgerow. Where are the men from Utah? Where are you, Luciapi? Luciapi here. We're opening up the roads inland from Utah. The supporting armor and big guns are following through. We think the men from Omaha are pushing up ahead. Is that true, Harry Marble? Have we gained a foothold yet? I hope so, Lou. We have moved in. We have liberated the first French villages, the beaches, the hills, the hedgerows, the towns. This is D-Day. is on its way, but this is only the beginning. More struggle, sacrifice, and suffering lie ahead. We may be comforted and fortified by the prayerful message of our president, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. God of the free, we pledge our hearts and lives today to the cause of all free mankind. Grant us the wisdom and the vision to comprehend the greatness of man's spirit that suffers and endures so hugely for a goal beyond his own brief span. Grant us a common faith that man shall know bread and peace, that he shall know justice and righteousness, freedom and security, an equal opportunity and an equal chance to do his best, not only in our own lands, but throughout the world. And in that faith, let us march toward the clean world our hands can make. Amen. American and British soldiers broke through the Atlantic Wall that Hitler said was impregnable and made a second front. With an eastern front and now a western front, the noose was fashioned that was drawn tighter and tighter around Nazi Germany until it ceased to struggle. But the beginning of that front was on the beaches, the critical, delicate first hours when a handful of men had to lead the way off the beaches. And the names of D-Day are Omaha, Utah, Gold, Sword, Juno, and Sam Mariglis, and Grand Combe, and Caen, and Lawrence Surmer, and Vierville. What sort of a day was it? A day like all days, filled with those events that alter and illuminate our times. And you were there.
Thanks for watching. If you'd like to help us produce more compelling historical content like this, please like, comment below, and share this video with fellow history buffs. And of course, be sure to subscribe to help keep history happening.